Hi, everybody. Welcome to, what's this called? Show. Um, <laughs> welcome to Making Fun of the News, where I look at headlines and I read stories and I look at pictures and try to come up with jokes. So this episode is from February 27th through March 12th. And here we go. Hey, how you doing? In great news for the eardrums and arteries of TV viewers, Rachel Ray announced that she is finally ending her TV show after 17 years. I guess she finally ran out of ways to make Sammies. And then people can make their own Sammies. I roll. Rachel, or as some people call her, Rach, or that annoying b said that her passions have evolved, also known as the first stage of menopause. Tragically, in 17 years, her hairstyle did not evolve, but neither has mine. Anyway, Rach said that her next project will be developing new Epicurean talent on all platforms, whatever the hell that means. Hey, TikTokers, it's me, Rachel Ray, your girl, Rach. Here's how you make a barbecue squirrel Sammy. That's my Rachel Ray impression. And if it annoyed you, then it was a good one. In sad news for family values, Kelly Ann con artist way announced that she and her husband are in the end stages of an amicable divorce, which concludes their unamicable marriage. Kelly's former boss, Donald Trump, sent congratulations to her for finally getting rid of the disgusting albatross around her neck. Sooner or later, we all end up with a disgusting albatross around our neck and other parts of our bodies. Keep it moving. Donald continued his words of encouragement for Kelly, saying that she will have a great life without the unattractive loser by her side. For those of you who do not know, Donald now spends his free time writing greeting cards for Hallmark. Kellyanne and her husband, George, quit both of their jobs two years ago to focus on their family, which maybe they need some new glasses because they're out of focus. Anyway, this is a lesson to everybody to keep your job so you can pay for the eventual divorce lawyers. Alleged rapper Cardi B, whose full first name is Cardiologist, said that being sentenced to 15 days of community service was the best thing that ever happened to her. Fun fact, she has two children, who apparently do not qualify as the best thing that ever happened to her. But I mean, I don't blame her. I wouldn't like anybody who gave me stretch marks inside and outside. Next. I don't know what the H-E double hockey stick she's wearing in this photo, but she should have been arrested for crimes against fashion. Cardi was initially arrested for an altercation that happened at a strip club. I don't know what she did. I mean, did she try and choke someone with a G-string? A Canadian brother and sister who were born 126 days before their due date were named by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's most premature twins. Other people named them a baby shower planner's worst nightmare. Okay, I said that. After the twins' mother went into labor at 21 weeks and six days, the hospital said they will not provide care for any baby born even one minute under 22 weeks. So the mom had to, you know, like cross her legs and hope for the best which she was successful and the kids came flying out after like 15 minutes after midnight. The mom said she is known as the queen of keggles. She didn't say that. I'm a horrible person. Here the twins are after he told them he was going to shove them back into their mom's oven to cook them some more. He did not say that. I'm a horrible person. The premature twins mother said they take after their father who usually only lasts about two seconds, like the night they were conceived. She didn't say that. I'm a horrible person. Anybody need a babysitter? In good news, the twins are now one year old and doing okay. But this seems like a really weird title to celebrate. Like, yay, we have the world's most premature twins. Yay, my kids couldn't stand my wife's diet, so they escaped her womb and then lived longer than any other premature twins. Let's party! It is called a womb, right? I mean, I think I remember learning that in Catholic school, that Mary had a womb. Or was that a little lamb? Bye. College officials and parents who actually care about their children are concerned about a new alcohol trend known as a BORG, which is an acronym for Blackout Rage Gallon, which consists of water, alcohol, sweet flavorings, and a hangover remedy. Sounds like a Rachel Ray recipe, which usually ends in a disaster. TikTok is blowing up with videos from students sharing their Borg recipes. She decided to wear that hat before she was drunk? 
Borgs are popular at darties, which is a way of saying day parties if you're a drunk 20-year-old. On a related note, anybody who eats Rachel Ray's food ends up with shardies. Officials are speaking out after a recent college Blarney blowout party, which sounds like it was named by a drunk person. It resulted in 28 calls to 911 for students who are suffering from alcohol consumption problems. Other dangers include odd colored tongues and having to go pee pee really bad when there's no bathroom nearby. These students who seem to be studying for their master's degree in alcoholism name their gallons like Borgen Donor or Justin B. Borg. I have a lot of drunken sorority sisters who follow me on TikTok. Hi. Um, first of all, please be responsible when you drink alcohol, especially at these parties where there's dangerous people. Having said that, here are some of my suggestions on what to name your Borg. Borgen Fairchild. I'm sure somebody already came up with Bjorn Borg. And lastly, alcoholicsanonymous.borg. Students are defending the new craze with one girl stating, when I compare Borgs to butt chugging, she said, referring to alcohol enemas, it doesn't seem as bad. First of all, that's the first time I've ever heard of butt chugging. I've heard of butt plugging, but that's another story. Anyway, this is going to be her senior thesis paper, Borgs versus butt chugging, a statistical comparison by Ashley Bieberhausen. Scott Adams, the creator of the cartoon Dilbert, made headlines this week when he said that black people are a hate group and suggested that white people get the hell away from black people. But at least black people are smart enough to know to get the hell away from anybody who thinks a comic strip is funny. Scott isn't even that great of an artist. It looks like he draws a lot of circles. He obviously doesn't know how to draw a line when it comes to making racist comments. The space in newspapers formerly occupied by Dilbert will now be overtaken by classified ads like Will the person who got hit in the head with a tomato in the 1950s please contact me? That's a real ad. I don't know if it's from the 60s or 70s, but it was real. Anyway, Dilbert got dropped faster than Silicon Valley Bank's stock price, so now the only paycheck that Scott will be getting is when he draws invitations to KKK parties. Speaking of racist cartoon characters, Lauren Boebert announced that she's going to become a grandmother at 36 years old. Lauren had her son at 17, which also made her mom a grandmother at 36, and now she's going to become a great-grandmother at 53, which sounds like it could be a SAT math question. If Lauren's mother had her at 19, and then Lauren had her son at 17, and now Lauren's son is going to become a father at 17, how old was Lauren's mother when she bought a t-shirt that said, World's Youngest Great-Grandma? Lauren quit high school and then eventually got her GED a few years ago when she turned 34. Maybe she should have gotten an IUD when she was 16. Lauren last week said that she didn't believe in funding high school sex education, so I'm sure that'll turn out well. Maybe Lauren can host Teen Mom Colorado. Bobert, who is against abortion, at least for white babies, said rural conservative communities are special because the teenage girls who become pregnant there tend to value life more than teenage girls in urban cities. Well, isn't that extra special? If you're sick of picking your children up early from school, but they're lazy and don't like sports, there's a new after-school activity sweeping the nation called the After School Satan Club. A parent requested a school in Colorado provide the Satanic Club option after her first grade son was bullied by other kids who said that he and his family would burn in hell because they did not attend church. Hashtag blessed. If a priest wants me to start going back to church, they're going to have to start changing those communion wafers and start providing nil wafers. The satanic group is peaceful and they do encourage empathy and a bunch of other harmless stuff that I couldn't memorize. Students will not be taught anything religious or to worship Satan. They're just going to do a bunch of harmless puzzles, games, arts and crafts. And hungry first graders will eat a snack called deviled eggs. Some parents expressed concern about the name Satan being used in a school club, so they suggested a more welcoming name like Lucifer's Lounge. Here is a group from the Satanic Temple with a sign inside of a school saying, Educatin' with Satan. Um, okay. Yes, Vanna, I'd like to buy a G. This Satanic group looks like they all went to the same cosmetology school. Forget about their religious beliefs. I'm more concerned about their beliefs that these hairstyles look good. 
I wonder who told her that this blue hair dye, looking like she tripped and fell headfirst into a toilet full of 2,000 flushes blue would be a good look. Who could it possibly be? Was it, oh, I don't know. Say it. Toblerone chocolate bars have been forced to remove the image of the famous Matterhorn mountaintop from their packaging because of a Swiss law that states that Swiss symbols and made in Switzerland are only allowed to be used if 80% of the product is made in Switzerland. But since Toblerone just announced a plant in Slovakia, they have to change their packaging. I'm only doing this story because I've never eaten a Toblerone. I usually prefer my chocolate come from iconic Hershey, Pennsylvania. So what better time than to eat my first Toblerone than on camera when I'm probably gonna drool. Some of you have seen my eating segments where I eat Skittles and that time I ate double stuffed Oreos, it, it never ends well. So the ingredients say Swiss milk chocolate with raisins and honey and almond nougat, whatever that means. And at the bottom it says fruit and nut, which are two words that people have used to describe me. Wow. Just rip it. Rip it real good. It looks like one of those those spikes that they have an exit to parking lots or not. It smells pretty good, like an Easter bunny. Oh my God. I bought this at the convenience store and he's like $4. I was like, $4 for a candy bar? Does that include shipping from Slovakia? Oh, it's crunchy. I hate eating on camera, but what was that? Something just like squeezed out or something. <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> out of a candy bar. I told you this always ends up bad. Well, I just got a raisin. So my package was different than what's on the screen behind me. It has like a purple mountain, majesty. Um. Anyway, the Matterhorn graphic will be replaced with a generic mountain. Like the original Aunt Viv from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was replaced with a generic actress. Bye. This is my dinner.